You're watching WQJP Television. Stay tuned to us. and Tunnel Set. Released in 2000, this set lives up to its name as it contains a plethora of bridges and tunnels that were available at the time. It's also the only set in the history of Thomas Wooden Railway to include the magnificent suspension bridge. Interestingly, the prototypes in the yearbook show the set having a male 6.5 inch action switch at the front, but it was not available in the actual set. I've never experienced this set before, apart from seeing it at our local Giant Eagle grocery store when I was a kid. There was an in-store daycare called the Eagle's Nest, or as Pittsburghers called it, the Eagle's Nest. And as far as I know, the bridge and tunnel set was used in every store. I remember seeing the set through the window on a train table and wondered what it'd be like to build it. Today, I get my chance. In this episode of Wooden Railway Layouts, I'm going to show you how to build this layout for yourself and give an in-depth analysis on the good, the bad, and the ugly of the bridge and tunnel set. So let's get started. Here is a list of parts you will need to build the bridge and tunnel set layout. For a straight track, you will need two 2 inch, three 4 inch, and two 8 inch straight pieces. Curve track, you will need seven 3.5 inch curves and eight 6.5 inch curves. Switches, you will need two male 3.5 inch switches and one female 3.5 inch switch, one male 6.5 inch switch, and one T switch. Ascending track, you will need three ascending pieces and nine risers. Adapters, you will need two male adapters. And special track, you will need one female bumper. Bridges and tunnels, you will need one span of the Sodor Bay Bridge, two spans of the arched viaduct, the arched stone bridge, the lifting bridge, the Suspension Bridge, the Tidmouth Covered Bridge, and the Single Stone Tunnel. Once you've gathered all your track, you're ready to start building. These are the blueprints for this layout. You can pause the video here to use them to build your layout, or you can get the image from the Thomas Wooden Railway Wiki, like I did.
and you're finished, your layout should look like this. Now it's time to decorate! This set came with these detail pieces to decorate your layout. A railroad crossing sign, two signals, two deciduous trees, one evergreen tree, and wooden figures of Sir Topham Hatt and one engineer. It also came with these engines and rolling stock to use on your layout. Thomas, Neil, Scarloe, the troublesome truck, the breakdown train, and Fred, the orange coal car. With the details in place and the building complete, this is what the layout should look like on your playboard. Now we'll take a closer look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of the bridge and tunnel set layout. Remember when I said the bridge and tunnel set lives up to its name? Yeah, I wasn't kidding. This set is covered in a wide variety of bridges and tunnels from the Thomas Wooden Railway. In fact, this set contains every bridge and tunnel available in the year 2000, with the exception of the mountain tunnel and the drawbridge. You know, maybe that's why Giant Eagle, a Pittsburgh-based grocery store chain, chose this set for its daycares. I mean, Pittsburgh is well known for its many bridges spanning each of the three rivers, not to mention the tunnels that lead into downtown, or downtown as we say. Anyway, the bridge and tunnel set makes great use of space and sits comfortably on a standard playboard. The set is encircled snugly by a line of track on risers like a bowl shape, with both ascending track pieces at the front grandly revealing the suspension bridge in the background. This would be an awesome shot for filming. I think it puts that one shot in season 3 where all the engines cross over bridges on top of each other to shame. The only thing I'd change is the placement of the single stone tunnel. I don't like how close it is to this switch, or to the ascending track behind it, and it blocks the amazing view being placed in the front. I would move it to this inner line with a 6 inch straight piece. There. Doesn't that look better? Now we can see the suspension bridge in all its splendor. My only complaint is that the suspension bridge isn't used to its fullest potential. The central arch is designed for track to run through it, but here it's empty. Granted, it being placed in the back makes it difficult to add extra track, but it's still a little disappointing. The arched stone bridge is treated worse. Not only does it not have a line that runs under it, but its awkward placement feels forced, as if the designers threw it in to meet the bridge quota or something. The bridge and tunnel set has two circuits, one loop, and one dead end. Trains traveling on the outer circuit can easily get to the inner circuit by way of either of the two switches. The T-switch is very handy for turning engines with trains in any direction. It's a must-have element for any set and allows the set to have pretty good flow. However, if a train travels clockwise around the outer circuit, it cannot access the inner circuit or loop through the switches without reversing. The bridge and tunnel set didn't last nearly as long as the lift and load set. I suppose it's safe to say that buildings and destinations are more fun than bridges and tunnels. Unless you're Australian. Interestingly, while it was only available in these United States until 2002, Australians were able to get the bridge and tunnel set until 2007. Do Yin's Down Under have an affinity for bridges comparable to that of Pittsburgh's that I wasn't aware of? Maybe.
But what say you? What do you think about the lift and load set? What are the things you like about it? And the things you don't like about it? And what layouts do you want me to cover next? Let me know in the comment section. And be sure to subscribe for more videos. For now, thank you so much for watching Wooden Railway Layouts. And, uh, that's about it. <laughs>